maybe bits and pieces, something, you know, just to get a little bit of independent uh, corroboration on the story. Honestly, honestly, good on him. Good on him for following, just following this through at all. Right. Like, because it was basically wide labeled as like, this is, there's nothing in here. This is trash. He's like, oh, you, you know, whatever. It's a slow day. <laughs> let me let me see what I can dig up if there's any to substantiate any of this. So it's, uh, I was I was impressed that he he took his steps like you know as you should as the director, right? So he's like, uh, so he finally he finally got in touch with uh, Graham Lightfoot, another fellow UFO searcher who is familiar with the area, and I think Graham Lightfoot was also he was also like a journalist for like some of the local newspapers. He had uh, worked. I think he had done a couple stories, uh, you know, regarding the area and like uh, stories about the farmers and things like this. So he he knew people in the area. He had relationships uh, with these people. So he, he you know he took it on. Uh, you know he was happy to to go check this out and and to see if Gordon there were Lightfoot's any cousin too. Yeah, point that out. Um, and so to see if there were any witnesses uh, of this UFO crash that had happened. So well, and and to be honest, it's like you, you hear about this this big operation. You're like, well, I mean, someone must have seen something. If that, if this is true, I mean, <laughs> this is happening right here. Like, I've, we'll follow it up because there had to be a couple civilian witnesses or or, or something. And so uh, in the letter, uh, it had included like a map, like not just the photocopy of the aliens, but it had a, it had a tight, like a kind of, you know, roughly John map and then a uh, kind of a set of coordinates about where the events had taken place. And then kind of taking those, uh, Graham uh, Lightfoot went in and, and to try to, you know, find some witnesses and ask around. Now he did. Uh, surprisingly enough, uh, through interviews with people in the area and locals, he did seem to locate what he thought was the UFO crash site, um, which was near Mary Mannion Corners in this area. But he also located some witnesses who had reported seeing uh, you know, bright lights or uh, in or around that time uh, that was reported to have been the uh, it, it, the, the time frame uh, within the Guardian letter. Um, one of these witnesses was named Diane Labanek, and Labanek. she claimed that Labanek, uh, Labanek. and she claimed Labanek. It's like Tabernacle, but Labanek. Yeah. Uh, and she claimed sure. that on the night of November 4th, 1989, she witnessed an intensely bright light pass over her house and then head towards a swamp that was at the far end of the property uh, of her property uh, on the south of her home. Now, well, she also says that the yeah, the craft, but she said that what, it, there was some like orange glow also separately from the craft, like the craft was going over to it. But she said it wasn't fire. Right, um, but she didn't know what it was. Uh, now, this part, of, this part of the story, is actually in uh, was uh, part of. We'll get to it in a bit, but this was actually in, un, in an episode of Unsolved Mysteries. I went in to uh, oh. to talk about this, and I feel like I actually watched that episode when I was a kid. Like this is because when I when I found out about this case file, uh, you know, I was looking around. And I was like, I I remember this one. Like I remember this. Uh, honestly, seeing I don't know. these things like the the stuff about it and the the, the fire in the field and things like I that. I don't know I, who in Carlton pissed off Bobby Stacks, but he <laughs> he in the beginning of that unsolved mysteries lets one of the low key biggest burns on the entire <laughs> community of Carlton. He goes Carlton, a city where nothing of significant usually happens. <laughs> and i was like holy shit this <laughs> town is boring as fuck, fuck. <laughs> i was like bobby stacks just Ouch. twisting well, it's a quiet it's a small population little farming town right like yeah but why yeah, do, why would wrong. you say like it's a quiet little town a, because it's because all of a sudden village. something rem and then he's like yeah. we're nothing of significance <laughs> normally happens. yeah because all, all of a sudden you had something remarkable happen so you got to paint because nothing country. does happen there <laughs> yeah. yeah it's true have a little tumbleweed going by before the fucking yeah. UFO comes. Yeah. Like, oh, you see that? <laughs> you uh, see the weed? <laughs> so, uh, f with this information from Labanek, uh, Graham reported the the findings to Qforn, and then uh, and also his results about when he went to examine the field in the swamp, but behind her home. Now, uh, Graham doesn't report seeing any signs. Uh, of heavy equipment being used or 
um, like vehicle signs of anything kind of been in there or, you know, no burn marks, no nothing that would probably have accompanied yeah. something that, you know, in the letter that says they fired multiple explosive ordinances at this thing. Like it, it, it would see, you'd probably leave behind some yeah, evidence, you would, but he you didn't would think see there'd, You know, there, you think there'd be some, <laughs> some evidence, <laughs> evidence either way, of shit like, exploding of shit exploding or some people claim the hoax. Like there would be evidence if they did, like they would drag generators. There would need to like be able to power this elaborate hoax or like set it up. Uh, yeah. No, no evidence <laughs> of any kind. Uh, and, and so shortly thereafter, uh, it, it was discovered that the Guardian material, which uh, Theophanes had re received initially, was actually sent to several other investigators as well. So you had uh, researchers from other uh, researchers in other UFO groups, um, you know, within the community. Uh, you had people, and the story just kind of started to spread within them. So you had, uh, I think, like the provincial director at the time of MUFON Ontario, Clive Naden, uh, the Quebec uh, director. Christian Page uh, also visited the area on separate occasions and said that they spoke to witnesses to to confirm that Graham's Lightfoot's uh, initial findings that something might have happened here. Maybe not exactly uh, from, from the evidence that they had gathered in the initial investigation. There doesn't seem to be exactly what was described in the Guardian letter, but perhaps there was something going on here. Yeah. Um, they had enough co co like corroborating evidence where they're like, okay, well, something happened. It's not to the extent of whatever the the Gordian's saying, but it's like something, like something weird happened because we have these people coming forward right. saying, you know, oddly enough, some similarities, but it couldn't possibly be to the extent of what uh, the Gordian's saying. Uh, so <laughs> now... Um you have the you have the kind of the the descriptions of what Diane Lebanek like going into exactly what she saw uh you know on that night so apparently uh on the on August 18th 1991 this would be after this is so following these events right so we were talking about the ones that happened this is November 4th 1989 she saw uh you know the bright light pass over her um pass over her house and then the the helicopters that she described uh coming in and flying low uh shining a beam of light beams of light over the area and then taking off uh, after that like two years later on the night of august 18th 1991 uh she had just put her children to bed and then while her husband was actually out running an errand she said that around 10 p i don't know what errand you're running around at 10 p.m i'm not sure <laughs> like it seems Seems strange. Yeah. But yeah, um, getting smokes or booze. Darts. Yeah, Grab smokes or booze. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, that's, yeah. that's right. Going darts. Um, darts. Uh, her dog started to bark frantically. So she went to the back window of her home to, to, to investigate what was going on. And she said that she saw what looked like it, out in that same area uh, where she had reported seeing the lights before, she saw red flames coming up from the field. But um, just by looking at it, she was, you know, she's lived, she's lived on this farmland for a while and she's, you know, she's, uh, familiar with, you know, what could possibly be a brush fire. She said that what she was looking at was definitely not something like that because it wasn't spreading through the field. It was very localized in like a small little area. Then she saw what she described as an unidentified object come down to the ground next to the flames. Like it landed, like it came down out of the air, like over the, over the trees and then yeah, landed it right wasn't next making, to It wasn't thing. making noise either. Like for how close, like if, if it was some sort of helicopter or something like she would have definitely heard like the, the blades uh, or if it was some sort of, you know, craft, she would have heard it, but this is just silently dropping from the sky. Uh, she described seeing on top of this object a, a flashing blue light and then another bright light that like an extremely bright light it made it difficult to kind of make out the the definite shape of the object because it was so bright like these these two uh light sources th that seem to be attached to the uh to the craft and then this this whole thing she saw like the the landing of the craft everything lasted maybe 10 minutes and then it lifted up went behind some trees and then disappeared and then as the craft almost simultaneously as the craft disappeared the flames went out 
Well, let's say it's flames, like an orange glow, like an orange glow went out because she she describes it as looking like flames giving off that orange glow. But she's she's always like pretty adamant that she's like it wasn't fire. Like I I wasn't seeing flame. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.